Thanks, thanks a lot, everybody, and good morning. Uh, it's great to be here to be, give you an update on GT Golf. Where you? Yeah. 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 What differentiates GT Golf from the rest of the junior market? You know, and that's a major new greenfield exploration discovery, as opposed to you know, reworking historical projects or just prospecting in the hope of finding a new discovery. statement as we will be talking about uh, you know, forward-looking items this morning. And this is a summary of the key points that I'll be talking about. Um, we've completed the prospecting phase, which has resulted in the subtle discoveries. A high-grade, precious metal-rich vein system and a gold-rich copper-gold porphyry. The discoveries have all the ingredients of a major mineralized system. Married that with excellent infrastructure and significant exploration upside in the Tier 1 mining jurisdiction of British Columbia, Canada. The project lies within the prolific Golden Triangle of Northern British Columbia, whose mineral endowment is intimately linked to its tectonic evolution. The Golden Triangle includes most of the major gold, silver and copper deposits in this part of Canada, associated with a long-lived ocean arc terrain which extends about a thousand kilometers along the length of the Canadian Cordillera and was accreted to ancestral North America. Most of the deposits are related to the Stahini group and the affiliated intrusions. More than 150 mines have operated in the region since, prospecting first, since prospectors first arrived near the end of the 19th century. We are certainly in the right address. The Red Chris Mine, a porphyry copper gold deposit that began commercial production in 2015, is our nearest neighbor in terms of operating mines. Now we are blessed by excellent infrastructure with the main north-south paved highway 37 running 10 kilometers from the project. We also have the high voltage power line running adjacent to the road which has some of the lowest cost power in the country at four cents a kilowatt. The water port of Stewart is also conveniently located for shipping out concentrate in the future. In addition, we're on the eastern side of the main coastal mountain belt in British Columbia, which is less rugged and receives less snowfall than a lot of the projects in this part of the world. At the project site elevation, the subtle target is at 1,200 meters above sea level, and it's a fairly flat-lying plateau. Now, if you compare that to, you know, when I was working in Chile at four or five kilometers, and you've got to think about desaling water, you know, this certainly um, it's very convenient topographically. And you know, we've also got the, um, you know, a hanging glacial valley there, which you know potentially um, helps with underground infrastructure that we could drive in at an elevation to reach the highest grade parts of the mineralized system. Now, British Columbia also is a, is a mining friendly province. So Beaver Creek recently, the, the uh, Deputy Minister of Mines talked about how they're really promoting investment, wanting more exploration, wanting more mines, and have a new $20 million budget to, to promote mining in, in BC. So the initial discovery on the, on the project was a high grade, precious metal rich uh, vein system of Saddle South. Three kilometers, three kilometers to the east, the Saddle North Prospect is poorly exposed with cover of glacial till and rock piles, but, but gave rise to a very strong um, IP chargeability and magnetic anomaly. In 2017, the first hole confirmed the potential for a gold-rich copper porphyry. Following further drilling in 2018, a discovery was confirmed. In short order, the target has been advanced through a number of phases of diamond drilling to where we are today, and we'll talk about that in the, in the next slides. The system certainly remains open in most directions, and highly prospective targets are adjacent as, as well as further afield within the 48,000 square kilometer, oh sorry, 48,000 hectare property. This is, this is a planned view of the, of the drilling overlaid on the contoured IP geophysics. So you can clearly see that strong correlation between the IP and, and, and the drilling. Now, there are also two sections marked on this plan, which will um, 
which I'll show you in the, uh, in the next slide, showing a cross-section of the deposit. And so, you know, what have we got at the moment? We've got a, we found a high-grade core of mineralization where we're talking about actual gold grades of a gram per ton and half a percent copper. You know, when you look at the, the equivalents, we're talking about what, over one and a half grams gold and over one percent copper. That measures 400 meters in strike, 300 meters in true thickness, and uh, extends over 1,200 meters. Uh, yeah, 1,200 uh, meters. And then that is encapsulated within a much larger, uh, strongly mineralized envelope, which measures 700 meters in strike, 600 meters in width, and uh, over 1,500 meters uh, down there. And again, as I say, it remains open in most directions. So here we are with the cross sections. You can see the, the outline of the sort of higher grade parts of the system. So in red, border envelope in blue. We see that grades also increasing with depth. Now the drilling this year has been able to confirm continuity borehole to borehole with mineralization of the surface, extending to, to depth, as well as section to section continuity. Uh, the target geologically, it's 205 million year old intrusion, which is very similar in age to uh, the nearby Red Crest deposit. It's associated with a series of porphyry intrusions, mainly diuretic to monzodiuretic, uh, which have been emplaced in the uh, Stahini group of volcano sedimentary rocks. And it's, um, there's an unconformity with the overlying Hazelton group as well, um, which you can see in the image of the blue rocks uh, right there. The porphyry system is, uh, includes, as I say, a number of phases of porphyries. We're looking at sort of three to four. You've got the pre-mineral, the sin-mineral, as well as post-mineral, and then we've got some cross-cutting matrix uh, dikes as well. The overall attitude sort of dips 70 degrees to the southwest, uh, and it's paralleled by a post-mineral fault in the football, which you can see there as a, as a clear marker horizon, and that sort of juxtaposes the sort of high temperature potassic alteration against a lower temperature quartz suicide pyrite alteration. I mean one of the questions is as you know what's the displacement on this? You know, where's the where's the rest of the of the potential porphyry which uh, you know we haven't found or worked on it at the moment. But it's certainly a fairly typical um, you know por uh, gold rich porphyry deposits um, you know, mineralization and grade is intimately associated with vein density. The greater the vein density, the, the better the grade. And you know, we see um, the best part of mineralization with that potassium case bar, magnetite pyrite, and charcoal pyrite. Here's a, a three-dimensional interpretation of the mineralization relative to the drilling to date. You can see some drill traces at the bottom of the model. There holes that. Uh, either are being filled or have been completed and we're waiting on drill results. But they're testing down to, to 15 to 1600 meters vertical depth. Um, you know, nothing's changed in the geology. We still see the same start of mineralization, alteration and port and porphyry mineralization. Um, we're just waiting on those assay results to come through. But you know you can certainly see that continuity of mineralization up the surface, you know, making this uh, a bulk mineable target with both open pit and underground optionality but again just remindful that you know this is only two years in, into the discovery and then the, the grey wireframe at the, at the right that's the football fault which is a, a as I say a very prominent marker zone now we've also taken now a, a hundred kilo an initial hundred kilogram composite sample right across the zone of, of mineralization for preliminary metallurgical work um, and both petrography and, and power genesis of the sulfide phases. You know, one thing, we're not seeing any, any deleterious elements. There's no arsenic, there's no mercury, there's, there's no clay to speak of. Um, so, you know, looking uh, very similar to other, other porphyry stars of mineralization within in British Columbia. So we're not expecting any surprises in, in the MEC work. And we were expecting those initial results uh, sometime this quarter. I just put on you, as I said, this is a, a gold rich, um, potassium rich, calcalic intrusion. Um, so similarities are with the, with Cadia as well as our neighbor Red Chris. And you know, when you think that the first drill hole into uh, Red Chris was 1970, 
uh, a discovery was made in 19, it was announced in 1975, but it still took 40 years before this came into commercial production in 2015. Similarly, you know, down at Cadia, first drill hole was put in in 1985, and the discovery was announced in 92, again 21 years before production in 2013. So, you know, while it's early days for us, we've come a long way in two years. First drill hole in 2017, discovery announced in 2018. As I say, you know, we've now confirmed that continuity of mineralization of the surface, as well as a long strike and to vertical depths of 1,500 meters with uh, increasing grade, and you can see you know, that overall uh, geophysical anomaly which is three kilometers. And, you know, with these porphyry systems and camps, they, you don't get a single porphyry, you get multiple porphyry. So it you know, gives us a vision of potentially where we can take um, you know, GT's project with further exploration. So as, you know, as I mentioned um, earlier, you know, the initial discovery was the precious metal rich vein system of, of Saddle South. Um, and you know, that, that's relatively small, it's sort of half a million to a million ounces. Um, it does have a, a potential value proposition in being amenable to an open pit and you could imagine some early cash flow as you start to you know, um, develop, develop this in phases with you know, open pits leading on to the underground. Um, However, I'm mindful that um, you know, with these vein systems, they tend to be fairly nuggety, so it would require a lot of drilling to be able to firm this up, which I don't see as, as really adding significant value. The big prize is in the porphyry here. But we do need to put all the geology together and sort of put it into a bow, and that's where we are at this stage. And, and then you, know, you can see with the porphyry, the, the extensive uh, geophysical uh, anomaly there, which is uh, you know, open for testing with multiple targets around, around there to, to find more mineralization. But as I say, you know, our, our key focus right now is on putting all the data together on, on the main porphyry that we've got and drilled. But um, you know, for, you know, other opportunities, we've got the Quash Pass target, which is sort of seven to eight kilometers to the southwest of, of Saddle. You can see here it's a coincident precious metal rich soil anomaly, gold, silver, there's copper, arsenic, which is extending over seven kilometers. And again, it's got a coincident geophysical anomaly. It's got some similarities to Saddle South, but when you think on, on that previous side, that area is, is one kilometer. Here, this is seven kilometers. So a significant, um, you know, anomaly. We've been doing further geochemistry, mapping, sampling, uh, geophysics to sort of build up those, those data layers to be able to tar target for drilling. But again, that's something we're planning for 2020. Yeah, the, the other thing that really differentiated GT Garden was another reason for, for joining was the quality of, of the data, which I think people tend to, to forget about. But you know, um, and I found that my time at Gold Corp was I, I was having to redo a lot of the work on projects that we acquired from Genius because it was substandard. But as an example, you know, all the core is orientated. We're doing four acid digest, multi-element well, geochem, with only age dating. We've done a framework of core scanning that, that's again providing us the detail for, for the alteration model and, and then we're infilling that with meter by meter um, hyperspectral terraspect units. We've got XRF units so we can make real time decisions on, on drilling. Um, we're doing whole rock geochemistry to, to be able to differentiate those porphyry phases because you clearly see differing grades within each porphyry and you can get different different metallurgical characteristics. Um, and as I said, we're also doing a whole lot, uh, sorry, petrography and petrology. But, you know, and, the, and the aim then is to be able to put all of this together into a coherent geological model, not a mineral model, but lithology structure, alteration, vein density model, um, and then mineralization, copper, gold, uh, sulfur. So once the drilling stops, that's when the real hard work starts, you know, and the aim is by the end of sort of quarter one next year to have that geological model done, and then that would, uh, on the back of that, would come out with our initial resource um, by about June, and, and we envisage that to be sort of inferred character. We're going to have a drill spacing of sort of 100, 100 by 100 to 100 by 150 in the deeper parts. Um, 
And we also, I've also started to engage with external engineering firms to commence all the study work on environmental baseline, water, geotech, you know, as I said, we are metallurgical work, um, infrastructure, so that, um, you know, we can be at a PEA level, but also making sure that the foundation is a step that as studies advance, that, uh, you know, we're, we're on the path to go to PFS and NFS. The, also, the First Nations, they're a key stakeholder. We, we, you know, the Toltan are, are in this part of the world. And um, you know, year on year, we've increased the proportion of First Nations employees. We're now up to 30% of our workforce is Toltan. And out of a field budget of $10.5 million, $2.5 million has gone into the, into the local communities, the contractors, and the commercial businesses. And you know, building relationships and partnerships starts at the exploration phase. But it's critical to set expectations early and not to overpromise. GT has an active uh, investment policy to support First Nations communities. And you can see here that in 2008, um, you know, we spent $100,000 supporting those initiatives. We have a similar budget for this year. You know, furthermore, you know, we're undertaking archaeological studies. Uh, we continue to, to monitor water, uh, mindful of the wildlife, uh, and, and have a very disciplined approach with our flight management on the helicopter to support that. Uh, so to finish, you know, we're well financed. We have a good balance of shareholders from retail to institution, and we have a strategic investment from new model. We recently hosted uh, an analyst site visit off the back of which we're getting, you know, starting to get positive research uh, coverage. Yeah, and then we look forward to being able to, to report back further results of our continued drill program, as well as the commencement of, of the studies as we advance it. It's very exciting new greenfield um, exploration discovery in BC. Uh, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you very much, Paul. We, uh, we have time probably for uh, for one question, if there is one. Just just wondering how you think you might be able to mine the south and north. Yeah, it's, I mean it's it's early days, hence why um, you know I've started to engage with uh, external consultants to look at that, but I certainly see that you know, there's both. Uh, open pit and then some form of bulk mining, you know, that's big open surface, whether it's block caving, you know, we've got to undertake all those studies, so, you know, we're going to, we're going to be looking at the capability of the rock uh, geotechnical studies. But there's certainly, you know, topographically, it, it's, uh, you know, no challenge, you know, we haven't got glaciers to move or, or mountains to move, um, so certainly uh, very amenable to, to open pit. All right, we'll try and fill this one quickly with Hi. Um, just wondering, it looks like you drilled 10,000 meters so far in 2019. You're planning on another 15,000? Yeah, so as, so as of today, we've drilled just over 20,000. We'd already drilled 10,000 into it, so that makes 30. We end up finishing the year at 25, so we'll have 35,000 meters into the project. We've released close to 9,000 results. Um, we've got some more coming. We're finding probably like everyone, the backlog in the in the labs is building up as um, as people are, you know, stacking up the, the labs towards the end of the season. But, um, so the weather's going to permit you to drill some more this year. No, yeah, yeah, we can drill up to the end of October. All right. Thank you very much, Paul.